Call signs. What do they mean and how are they created? Well, I'm going to take you through the process, so please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, kb 9 vbr your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, ST asks the following question. Are all call signs six characters? I have seen one that is four and was wondering what the rules are regarding letters and numbers. Well, thanks for that question. Prospective hams and even new amateur radio operators experience a bit of confusion when it comes to call signs. There seems to be an endless variety and variability, and for some, they just don't make any sense at all. But call signs are vital, and once you are licensed, they become your on-air identity. So I'm going to talk a bit about call signs. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about the call sign system in the U.S. Every country has an allotment of call sign prefixes, and the method each country uses to assign their calls is different. So for simplicity's sake, I'm going to concentrate on the United States. Even with that, this subject is complex enough. Well, in the U.S., call signs are regulated by the FCC. Call signs are issued to amateur radio operators through the sequential call sign system. This means that there is a pool of call signs, and when a new license is issued, the FCC goes into the pool and assigns that license a sequential call sign. So how are these call signs created? Well, stepping back a bit, we need to first look at the structure of a call sign. An amateur radio call sign consists of three components, the prefix, the region number, and the suffix. Looking at my call sign, KB9VBR, you can see the three parts. The prefix can be either one or two letters long, the region is a number from zero to nine, and the suffix can be one, two, or three letters. I have what's called a two by three call sign. It contains a prefix of two letters and a suffix of three letters. Shorter call signs are called one by two, two one by three, two by one, or two by two, depending on their combination of prefix and suffix num letters. The call sign structure can define the license class of the radio amateur. Shorter call signs are held by higher level operators like extras or amateur advanced, and longer call signs are typically held by technicians and generals. But this may not always be the case as when a person upgrades, they may keep their original call sign. For example, I'm an extra class operator, yet I'm still using my sequentially assigned call sign that I received more than 20 years ago. But if I wish, I could apply for a 1x2 or 2x1 vanity call sign. So now you know the structure, let's break down the parts. We'll work backwards and talk about the suffix first. This is the really easy part, as it can be either 1, 2, or 3 letters long. The length depends on the class the license was issued for. When you take your test and receive your technician license, you'll receive a 2x3 call sign. The three letters of the suffix are issued in sequential order. For example, if you started at AAA, the first license would have a suffix of AAA, then the next AAB, AAC, etc., etc. When the FCC gets all the way through the se sequence of suffix letters, they will increment the second character in the prefix and then start all over again. So my license, KB9VBR, was issued in 1999. 20 years later, in call sign region 9, we're now up to KD9O blank blank series. Next, we'll move into the region number. That's the number in the middle. Every amateur radio call sign has a number in it. This number corresponds to the region in which the call sign was issued. Back in the early days of amateur radio, and I'm talking like in the 19 teens, the United States was broken down into call sign regions. And I'll throw up a map here that shows where they're all located. The number one is in the northeast, number four in the southeast, uh, six in California, and for some reason, zero, occupies a big portion of the Central Plains. I received my license in Wisconsin, so my call sign has a nine in it. If I would have lived in Minnesota, I could have received a zero call sign. So you can see how where you live can affect the number you receive. It used to be that when you moved into a new call sign region, you would have to request a new call sign, but that is no longer the case, and you can keep your call sign when you move. You can also request an outer region call sign number through the Vanity License Program, but more on that in a bit. You still with me? Good. This is where it gets interesting, with the prefix. In the U.S., call signs start with the letters K, N, W, or AA through AL. 
what prefix you have usually indicates either how or when your license was issued, or what license class you hold. For example, in the early days of amateur radio, call signs would systematically be issued with a W prefix and a three, and a three letter suffix. As, a, as the W calls were used up, the FCC switched to the prefix K. When the novice license class was created in the 1950s, new license holders would receive a novice call sign with a KN prefix. When they upgraded uh, generals, the N was dropped, and their 2x3KN call sign was converted to a 1x3K call sign. As the general license holders upgraded to extra, they could receive a shorter 1x2 call sign. So there was an incentive to upgrade as one of the perks was a shorter call sign. But this method was unsustainable as the amateur radio ranks grew and the FCC quickly ran out of call signs again. When this happens, the feds will issue a call sign from the next lower pool. So as they ran out of 1x3 call signs, they switched to 2x3 call signs with a WA and then eventually WB, WC, and WD prefix. All right, so far so good. But to make things interesting, in the early 1980s, they switched again and started issuing call signs with a KA prefix. This started about the same time as uh, the volunteer examiner system was rolled out. So I think it was a method to differentiate between licenses that were tested at an FCC office and those that tested with volunteer examiners. To make things even more confusing, when the Code Free Technician license came out in the late 1980s, those individuals received a 1 by 3 call sign starting with N. I believe this was done to differentiate uh, between Code Free Technicians and uh, the pre-1987 technicians, which tested for Morse code as part of receiving their license. Well, that pool quickly depleted, and by the late 1990s, they switched to 2x3 call signs, starting again with K. And that's where we are today. Systematically issued call signs have two characters, starting with the prefix K. Now, I didn't say anything about the prefixes AA through AL. These haven't been issued systematically to uh, new license holders, but instead have been set aside for amateur extra class license holders. Like I mentioned earlier, the pool of 1x2 and 2x1 call signs for extras had been quickly depleted, so the FCC allowed extra class license holders to receive a 2x1 call sign starting with the letter A. There is uh, one more exception to the prefix madness, and that has to do with the regions Alaska, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Caribbean areas, and Hawaii and the U.S. Pacific Islands. Since there is no region number for those areas, the region number map was created long before Alaska and Hawaii became states, Alaskan call sign holders could, could receive a prefix with a KL, NL, WL, or AL. Puerto Rican and Caribbean hams, KP, NP, or WP, and Hawaiian and the U.S. Pacific territories get AH, KH, NH, or WH. One of the perks of living in those states is that you'd re, you, you'll receive a very distinctive sounding call sign. And I can guarantee that it'll be a conversation starter if you identify on the local repeater with one of those. Now I hinted at this, and if you don't like your systematic call sign, you can change it. For example, if you upgrade your license, you can, request, you can, either, you can also request a new systematic call sign based on the pool, or you can go out and get yourself a vanity call sign. The vanity call sign program started in the mid-1990s. It's open to all amateur radio operators, and it gives uh, hams the ability to pick their own distinctive call sign based on a structure that is, avail that is available to them. Technicians could request a 1x3 call sign, or extras, 2x2, 2x1, or 1x2. The vanity program makes it easy if you want to get a call sign that was held by a relative that passed away, or to pick up a call sign based on your initials. Or say you have a call sign that is tough to say over the air and you want something more comprehensible or distinctive. The vanity program then is for you. I'll put a link to the program in the description below. And finally, international call signs. Each country has their own set of prefixes. Some are easy to identify over the air and others are quite difficult. That's why a prefix chart comes in quite handy if you're chasing DX. Well, do you have any questions or comments on call signs? I'd love to hear them, so please leave a comment below. I'll filter through them and add to the conversation. Who knows, your question might even show up on our next Your Questions Answered video. 
Well, for more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. So if you like this video, give me that big thumbs up and also check out you know, some of the recommended videos alongside here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Pressing subscribe is your way to be notified when a new video is released. Well, I'm Michael, DB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.